I think the Museven made a commentary on the changes he made when he said uh, I am releasing a slightly edited cabinet slightly all that happened was very insignificant changes in the cabinet and changes that don't communicate a particular message because he dropped the minister for Karamoja and the deputy understandably because both of them were in court over the stealing of Karamoja iron sheets but they were not the only beneficiary if you say both of them were in court what about Amos Rugorovi what about everybody else who benefited because this Mabati was shared by nearly 20 ministers so really so the and, and, and that undermines the attempt to say as NRM they have taken action. There was no action taken. Was it a cabinet for... Uh, because usually at half year seven makes changes. Sometimes those changes are to strengthen his team as he goes for the 20 or for the next general elections. Mm -hmm. I don't see any strength in the team that he has brought in people who are great mobilizers. Mm. I think the only message that is in these changes is that at almost, it's now tradition that every two and a half years, mm. Museven makes changes, so he has made changes even for the sake of it. That's what I see in these changes. Mm. The only institution where there are some changes that are significant was in the military, mm. where Mr. Museven appointed his son, the CDF. But most significant for me is again, you see, casually sometimes M7 can send a message. The list of the changes in the military for the first time, and I have covered M7 for the last more than 20 years, the list also has the guest of honor. Who will be the guest of honor when Mbadi is handing over to Mozika in Erugawa? And M7 says the guest of honor will be Sari Msari. It is the first time that this is happening. And that message is telling everybody that we are now under family rule. Because after M7 and his brother and his wife, I think the person that occupies number four is Mohoz. And within the military, I think Mohoz cannot even answer to the Minister for Defense. Because a simple function like a handover, M7 should have allowed the Minister of Defense to preside over, at least to create an artificial impression that uh, the Minister of Defense is in charge. Because the hierarchy of the, the defense, that the CDF is answerable to the Minister. But if the minister cannot even preside, cannot be entrusted with presiding over uh, the handing over of office, here yeah, you are just a, a minister in a name. What is the legality of that now? There is no legality uh, in it. It is not illegal what he's doing. You cannot accuse him that he's doing something illegal, mm. but he's doing something irregular. Mm. That you get someone outside the defense establishment with want to preside over defense functions mm. when you have three ministers in defense because I think Mohoz cannot nobody in the, in the government can preside over his function because even his uh, promotion it is Salim Sare who came to preside over and interestingly because at that time David Mohoz, I mean uh, uh, Wilson Mbadu was still the CDF Sare didn't want to salute uh, Mbadi so he came dressed casually as if he was going to milk cows so the, the, the intention was that, no, if I go dressed in military uniform, I will salute him. But mm. So one way of avoiding that embarrassment, he came dressed uh, in civilian clothes. Mm. So really, Museven is arbitrary, but he's also casual, but he's also contemptuous. I think he holds the country in contempt, mm. that you can get family people. Maybe even the rancor was negotiated. Mm. Again, the, the other message you can read from this is now the unofficial disbandment of the Muhoz pressure group which we had been told will become a political party and its principle will contest the 2026 election. Mm. Museveni has answered that, that Mohoz will not be a candidate, it will be Museven. And I think Mohoz had uh, given a, a point when he was in Masaka, when he said elect people who will work for development and who will work with Museven. So the people who had uh, been excited um, by Mohoz's birthday parties and subsequent rallies 
now must find a refuge somewhere else. The outfit has unofficially been disbanded. There, were, there are those, uh, there's a section of public who are saying that he has made, this, he has made him stronger because he has extended near to the road. There, there, he was, there was no doubt that Muhozi was stronger. Which rank and which office did he hold when he started going around and the division commanders are waiting for him? You saw when he was going into Masaka. It was as if the president was one going to Masaka. So really, Muhoz does not, from today onwards, nobody should be deceived that Muhoz becomes stronger by an appointment. He's stronger simply because he's the son of Museveni, and that is it, whether he's appointed or not. That's why he has been frouting the UPDF Act and the Constitution, and no action is taken against him. So for him to be stronger, he does not need any office. So now, but he can be contained in a particular office. But now that he is the CDF, will it reduce some of his uh, time and it is not going to be, It is not going activities. to be possible for a CDF to go to Masaka to address Serari. It is not going to be possible for a CDF to go to Kapitua to address Serari. That has ended. That whole Pirao group now is disbanded. And that's why M7 picked Lilianabe and Barugare and he made them ministers. So the rest you can go and, and look for another accommodation elsewhere. So that story of Mohoza and the president has ended at least for now. He, General Mohoz comes at a time when the opposition and the section of public have been accusing gross human abuse, especially by security agencies. So what is the thing? You see, again you need to understand why the military sometimes descends into violence. Why they become violent. The military becomes violent when Museveni's hold on to power is challenged. Remember when the owner of Bob Wine was arrested, people were shot and killed in Kampala, in other parts of the country. When Museveni is not uh, under pressure, this military will be friendly. But he, it, it is it is it's a point of last resort when Museveni is under pressure. And his son, by the way, is accused of having masterminded the the killing of people and kidnapping and disappearing of people. Mm. Because I think uh, Muhoz Kainerugaba has become unofficially the first defense, the first line of defense, mm. defending his father to continue staying in power. Because the, naturally, M7 trusts Muhoz Kainerugaba more than any other military person. Uh, you remember the minister Chitutu Saga, where they, she was asked to resign, mm. and many other people like Minister Namuganza and so on. So the president has retained Minister Namuganza, but Chitutu has been asked. What does this mean? <clears throat> I don't think M7 worries about parliament anymore. That ended. His worries with parliament ended mainly with the seventh parliament. If you remember the sixth and seventh parliament, M7 had even proposed that the constitution should be changed to give him authority to disband parliament in case of a disagreement. Mm. The subsequent parliaments under Kadaga a few disagreements but eventually the parliament was able to tow the line. Mm. So ministers Kutes and Jim Wes were censored by the seventh parliament, I think six and seven. Those ones had to go because parliament was a very strong institution mm. but it also had the advantage that uh, Many of them, seven contemporaries, we are still part of parliament, was brought over by Wapakawuro, the Kategayas, the Bidan, we are still part of parliament. You now have a whole lot of new generation. People who are in parliament just because there is a salary to pick, not who are in parliament because they want to change the direction of the country. So I don't think seven worries about parliament anymore. So the decision of parliament, he may even forget which decision they made. What do you see ahead of fighting corruption in this new government? There is no fighting corruption under Museven. Museven survives in power partly because of corruption. The only difference is that uh, Museven has made corruption official. If you remember the report into the ghost soldiers, Kazin said there was official corruption and unofficial corruption. Museven does not have to go and steal money. He gives himself as much as he wants. That's why at his residence he has 622 billion shilling. The rest of government people, those who are, have no opportunity to give themselves money, are the ones who can be accused of corruption. I mean, look at Museveni's wife, the son, and everybody in his family. 
they all have a convoy from me to uh, from Kolo where I will stand here to one again. Isn't that corruption? I saw Moz going to Masaka. Does Moz have a budget to fuel all those vehicles and fuel the helicopter? Really, Museveni's family and group are corrupt officially because they get money. How much they want, they will give themselves in the budget. The Kitutu and Nandutu can be hounded because they are not part of the, the, the ruling class. They are just the employees who are looking for jobs. What message do you give to the new entrants in the cabinet? They can go and serve themselves like others because I don't think there is anything corrective that Seven wants to achieve from the cabinet. First of all, he runs a, a government at State House where he employs more than 1,000 people. Most of his work is done there. That's why his party the other day was crying, they can't meet him. The last time Museveni had held a meeting of a National Executive Committee was after the death of Olanya. Since then, decisions have been taken on the phone. So people who are in the cabinet, by the way, some of them also see Museveni on TV. They are in the cabinet, but they never get to see him. They also see him on TV and, uh, hey, this is the president. They are like you, they are like any other person. There is no difference apart from giving them a vehicle and a policeman. Nchuka chukeza kwa ledo mwa mu sebe ni echiro, echikese zoro alero. Zongero kula ganti obu inza wabana Uganda, ayongero butu wala no buti la dalamo familie. Butu nulida enja uro jako ze newe ya lese, ulabi la dalanti Uganda e yongero kugenda kuchupa. Tukusabida kweta agaba, bafadha wade wa saba, e, e misa bilo, unako veta agaba kusaba kumi. Nuhutu nulango obu inza buge nda dalamo familie, ngabo ichayo lese. Nti mama, prime, mama, minister of education, umutaba ni ya ukulira maje. Katishi efuse family affair. Nuti ya ne kualite ya wa minister ya ingidemu. Na haba, haa. Olaba angate wali nja uronyo, ukuja kuo kongere guanga, odite ya kamo mudubi, ya guango kongere ukunyikira, bana Uganda tuino kongere ukwe sabire nyo. Embele ya tulimusi nungi. Kakarunja akari mungu gamba manya kuchuka. Ne karakita, nevi korwa, bige nda kongere, obubino kusinga baba demu. E Gwanga tuweza kunga amanti wa minisa ya wagendo ditereza ngu kufa wa guru wafu. Tetu ina subi mukabi nentienu. E subi tetu ina ngubu inza vuchu usi. Nenga tuchari mumbe ila bweti. Tewali. Anti mubaba mabati chitutu nena andutu sivu kaa baba. Waluwa baba banji. Tuandirabe 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 sanyo funyo nyo 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 voli ya wakatini. Ngabona wona voli ya kuati wako ngatalimu. Niola ba anti ilamu ni mwevya na na habana. Kuhu za hanti maimu sevi ni haina HLA chenja uru nechiru ni chacha ya galize guanga li nombe unya uwe unya. Elu mtu wa gama hanti kakatu vitongo li viga tiwa okusala kukunsa sanyo. Ugeno kula wangati ya yonge dobo ya yongezi, nganobu bibu ya yonge. Doso kane uwebu ze vitongo li uluachibi ya kulewa. Kubanga mini suizi za hali zinafuye. Nibabite kambi vitongo li. Kati hati na vitongo inayo ni vile mwa. Hati na nibabiza mu government. Kakati chitegi za hanti government ya njini njini ni minister za uye mfu. Bievifu, minuwe nawe tulimu kwe kwasa, kwe kwasa, kugeza kuzanyila buungo buwaba na Uganda, nengo ubi bugenda kwe yongea na ukusinga wewe wade. Elabu, botu nulida, awa ganda wafaba wele duwa uwa minister, awa singo uunji, tikubanga wadebe kukutuliza nyoku familia ya maimu seven ya banga luna ya wadeba tambula. Ngeuru wala wadebe kukutuliza kuli, chitegeza ngeye chili niti familia kugabana. Olina ena agama nange mpira ya wanga wa wabili, noli oteke kono, noli, noli, tewali nja uro, tewali. Uh, when you look at the reshuffle, the reshuffle, there is no difference the cabinet we had. Actually showing that the, the Mr. Museveni's family is taking over the country. You see where the president is Mr. Museveni. The, the minister for education is the, the first lady, the wife. The son now heads the army. That shows that our country is going into a bitter state. And uh, um, I tell all the, the religious leaders to pray more. If we are having two prayers a day, let us have ten. Our country is going to a deep state. We don't know how we are going to, to, to get it from the mud it's sunk in. It's totally sad. The people of Uganda need to rise because our country is going when we are looking. Now, dropping some people that were involved in the Mabati saga is not a hope to us. Many people were involved, but we have seen very few that have been dropped. If they were doing it for the good of the nation, all people that were involved would have been dropped. But you see others have been maintained and maybe others have been promoted to other, other, other levels, which means we have children and we have others that are not children. No, I can't say this is involving the, the youth, but we are getting more people who are close to the first family. That's why I tell the country that this is a family share, where a person says also, give me those two as ministers. The first lady also says, give me those. 
the, the, the brother also says, give me those. So this is a family affair. I can't jubilate that you are getting new people in the cabinet working under a bad government. I'm indeed grateful that the president has made a reshuffle, a well-informed reshuffle, a reshuffle that will benefit the people of Uganda, and a reshuffle, of course, that will make sure that, of course, Uganda reaches the next level of development. The new entrants will bring knowledge that they have to NRM as a government, and, of course, and make sure that, of course, we work together. We know them. We know Liliana Bear is a good person who can work within the circles of NRM. Balam is also a dedicated servant of NRM, and others also have been brought on board, including General Mbadi, who will bring the knowledge that he has really harnessed from Pre President Museveni, right from uh, the, 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 the initial stages that he worked with President Museveni as his bodyguard. These are knowledgeable people who will bring uh, fresh knowledge to the political party. And for those who have been, relin who have gotten, uh, been relinquished, uh, their, 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 their services being relinquished to other levels, I wish them well. Of course, they have been given the positions of advising the president. I know they will advise the president well, uh, the same pijas, Ari and Tabazi, and the rest. Wonderful preaching freedom as well. These are good people who have worked for us, and we need to appreciate them. And this is the right time for us now to take credit as, as a PLU. PLU, we have now upgraded and we are now in things. We are now uh, 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 an organization that has really benefited out of this reshuffle. Of course, we have Lilian Aber, we have Balam, we have uh, General Muhosi. And we know uh, our, our hopes are still there. Eh? Even if we don't contest, we don't have a presidential candidate this time, as General Mwosi, but we know we will be having a president in the near future, and it is not far. We will be having General Mwosi as the president of this country uh, in the near future. Of which, to me, the near future is very soon. We are very happy. You know, when a student is elevated to the next class, you know that there will be a good certificate that will come in, and General Mwosi will be having a certificate of of, of, of a president of the Republic of Uganda. And I really thank the president for taking that informed decision. Let me tell you one thing. General Muhozi is a very humble servant of this country. He's somebody who doesn't quarrel. He's somebody who takes advice. He's somebody who is ready to serve our people. He's somebody who will make sure that security of our country, our borders, is well protected. He will combat the question of cattle wrestling, he will make sure that security is well guaranteed in our country. And I don't doubt that he is the best person in that same position that he has been given. He will do the net full, the net full, the net full of course. Where does this lead? The choices of the president for leaving out the ministers who were mentioned in the Iron City scandal for Karamoja. With that, I concur, I support him seriously. At this time, we need to be firm and fight corruption. Anybody mentioned in a corruption tendency, that person is not fit to serve in the government offices. With that, I support him. Looking at other ministers, especially those ones who cannot really perform, we have other ministers who are extremely old. For example, right now, General Moses Ali, the president should have allowed him to rest. We have so many young people who can perform for this country. I don't know what the president was looking for. Was he looking for service delivery? Or he was looking for maybe appraising, appeasing some people? I thought when you appointed a minister, you are to serve the nation. We need someone who is active, someone who can perform. But look at this current cabinet. There are others who are very old, others who are very sick, others who cannot even talk. And they are yet appointed as the second deputy prime minister. So I feel the president should have given those who are able, those who are capable. Look at the appointment in the UPDF. I am telling you, as a country, we need to, do, we need to be totally scared as per now. Looking at the president appointing his son 
to be the army commander. Now we have a lot of doubt. And we are asking ourselves, what came into his mind to give that mandate to his son? Now he is the commander in chief. The son is the army commander for the defense forces. So now it's as if the president is having some plan. I think he now plans to impose his son onto Ugandans by introducing him and allowing him to have control over the army, which is very dangerous for this country. Uganda is not a monarchy. Uganda is not like leading the traditional people, whereby you lead, you live to your son, you live to your father, that is out. So the president should remove away in his mind the idea of pushing his son onto Ugandans. So for me, I thought he would give that position to somebody else, not to his son. He is already the commander-in-chief. That is enough for that family. Uh, you know, all those ministers who are given the position of senior presidential advisors, to me, those ministers are now dropped automatically. We have ever had that position, so-called senior presidential advisors. They have no work. They are doing nothing. They have no work. They are just like in Katebe. So for me, those, those for me, that was the best idea of dropping them indirectly. You know, when you are dropping somebody, you cannot say I have dropped you. you look at all those ministers. The, 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 the former minister in charge of Northern Uganda, the former minister of agriculture. In fact, so many ministers were men so that they are now given position of senior presidential advisor. That position is not there, I'm telling you. And they have no work. So that, that was the best way of dropping them indirectly. And I really wish them well. Let them, let them serve. We shall, we shall keep following. Uh, you know, for me, I think, for president maintaining those ladies, you know, currently, the way Uganda is moving, the president is not interested in seeing anybody who would challenge himself or the son in the future. That is why he's trying to maintain those ladies. And if you look at those ladies, they follow orders. They, they are not like men who could think of maybe doing something. For ladies, they just follow directives. And you know, naturally ladies are quite obedient. Therefore, if you want to rule for long, you have to deal with ladies because they do exactly what you tell them. That's why I'm, I'm saying the president is now having something in his mind. Look at those ones who would challenge him, who would challenge the son. He would now try to move them away. Just try to get people who could strictly respect his orders so that in the future you never know what will happen. Uh, you know, uh, according to what we know in Parliament, there were some teams that informed us that they were carrying on the investigation. You know, those and who do investigations, sometimes they mislead, they mislead the president. To me, I think that maybe they misled the president that uh, Arab of Golobi may not be having serious problem as far as the scandal is concerned. That is what I think. But there was a team that, that were carrying on investigations and they were giving reports to the president. The president last, last time told us clearly that he has set the team to find out exactly what happened on Karamoja scandal. So to me, I suspect that maybe Bugolobi found his way of bribing those people just to write good report about him to his excellency. But those who couldn't do much, they were strangled, they were chased away, they were dumped. That's what I think. Uh, generally, the way I look at the cabinet, there are other people who are quite active, and in the previous, in the previous years, those ministers were very active, they were performing very well for the betterment of this country. And it is true, there are other ministers who are non-performance at all. I wish the president would have changed those ministers who are non-performance. And if I were the president, he would have done the due diligence of, of, of screening those ministers case by case, one by one. He should have really found out exactly what happened to each and every ministry. But the way I look at it, uh, he decided to maintain those ones on fear that when he drops someone, maybe the repercussion may be used onto him. Looking at those who are very old, 
those are who are not performing. I, I think he was having in his mind that let me maintain them. Just like that. All of you cases that he decided to change. For me, I have nothing much. I just want to thank the head of this country, President Yoweri Museveni, for the opportunity he gave me to serve at the highest level in government as a cabinet minister. I am very grateful and I thank him for that opportunity. While many people in the country saw nothing in me, President Yoweri Museveni saw something in me and appointed me to be one of the 100 most important or very important persons in this country. And I've done my best to serve this country. Despite the challenges that were there, I would have served even better. But because of the challenges that were there, I did a little, but at least I have left a mark where I was appointed. I want to thank him and I want to thank God for, for that position. Um, I also want to congratulate my colleagues who have remained in cabinet. I want to wish them well and I am happy that they have remained. I'm also happy for the new entrance that the president has appointed. I want to wish them well. Where I have gone wrong, I ask the president to forgive me. But as I move from the front bench to the bank, to the back bench, I will still serve this government diligently. I will serve the NRM government, I will serve my president in my capacity as the woman member of parliament. As you well know, we are many players in this field. But I've now moved to the bench. It doesn't mean that when you leave the field and you go to the bench, you don't, be, you, you don't remain one part of the team. I'm the part of the winning team, the NRM team, and I will cheer them from behind. I will serve in my capacity at the bank bench, and I'm happy for that. Banang is says that I would like to thank the president first for the slight changes he has done to his cabinet. But uh, as he rightly put it in the message, he says this is a slight amendment. And when you analyze, you discover as if the intention was to see how to take care of people who had been in PLU. That is how I observe it. Rightly so, the major changes are yet to come. So that's what the country should be expectant. The real changes have not yet occurred. But we are progressing in the right direction. When you are now made the CDF, you are now playing a very critical role in the country's security architecture. That means politicking may not be an option anymore, but you have to pursue matters that relate to the security and peace of Uganda, other than politicking. Exactly, that's now as joined to, to maintain and do what they call developmental aspects of society, other than just mere politicking. The overview. The general overview, first of all, number one, the mega reshuffle has, is here to take place. What has happened is just uh, what we call uh, tactical aspects and uh, to address a certain dynamic that had uh, arisen in society. <laughs> but the mega one is here to come at the right time. Today, what we saw is a hint of what is to come in the future. We are just peeping to the future. The future is just there and we have just peeped it. That's what the president has done. It is a peep to the future of what is come to come in Uganda.